Hi guys, so this is December 20th, uh, 2019, 2022, I wish. Uh, I have a few videos in preparation and need to be finished up that require being outside, but I haven't been able to get outside to get them finished. So uh, my seed catalogs have started coming in. So I thought, well, rather than try and freeze my butt, trying to finish up those outside videos, I would A, show you uh, seed catalogs I've started getting, what I'm still waiting on to get, and, uh, and then start the, the haul of the seeds that I have A, already received so far this year, and B, possibly in another video, show you what seeds I already have because I got a buttload. Uh, you'd think, yeah, I think gardening kind of has like addictive properties sometimes because it's like I have enough seeds already to feed a small city, um, but I keep buying more. And it's not so much because the seeds have gone out of date or anything like that, but just because I see other pretty things and I want them. So uh, yeah, so we're gonna get set up here with the camera, see if I can work out some angles so it doesn't look like that PVC pole is coming out of the top of my head. Sorry about that. You can see over here, my rootings, root cuttings, uh, some of them are coming along. And we'll do another video to show you how they're doing. And my Right here, those are my Meyer lemon seedlings that I planted to see, just to see if anything would come up. And I think I started with 13. And I know I've got eight good ones. There's like three or four punier ones that I'm probably not gonna continue taking care of. Just get them out of here and concentrate on the eight because eight's too much anyway. And uh, so I'll see if you hear something that sounds like someone's snoring or working up snot or something like that. It's because someone is. It's my little cat, Pearl. My little pandemic kitty that wandered into my basement a year and a half or so ago. And she has some weirdness going on with her upper respiratory that, you know, retired veterinarian here. I've done a whole lot. And she just keeps happy and healthy, but just keeps like a little two-year-old child keeps snorting out snot bubbles so if you hear anything really gross just ignore it you know she's at the point where I can't let her outside to <laughs> let her deposit all the goobers out there so yeah my my house cleaning skills have been challenged lately but yeah let's get into it okay so I've got the seed catalogs divided up into two different categories catalogs that I've received in the mail before and 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 or purchased from and then some more that I received brand new this year and I'll just kind of give my opinions. So first and foremost is seeds and such. So this this was always my my favorite because they had a thing where if you bought a certain amount of packets like I think the, the number was 20 you know as you got up incrementally the seed the, the cost of the seed packets um, went down per thing and so I basically um, did that use that as my thing because you know there were some things you know especially stuff that I you know had never tried before you know if I didn't want to spend you know you know six dollars on 20 seeds i could instead because i think after 20 it was like a dollar 99 to start off with at least it used to be and it went up last year and that's that's to be expected um but it's gone up again this year so i don't know i've got i've since come across other websites and seed catalogs that you know they they kind of sort of have better deals because you know I'm kind of on a fixed income here um, I have to buy with my 
my wallet. I can't just, you know, go to all the pricey, expensive ones. And, you know, I really don't want to sometimes. What I like about Seeds and Such is um, they have the price break. So they've now bumped up the price of the seeds to $3.99 pack if you get one to nine packets. And then it goes down to $3.75 if you go to 10 to 15, $3.50, $16 to 19, and then $3.25. Wasn't too long ago that it was $1.90 something, 99 or something like that. And it's a little bit easier to buy seeds, you know, 20 packets of seeds when you're only paying $2 a packet. Um, they also have, um, what is their shipping? Dun, dun, dun. It's $5.99 for shipping for seeds and such. Ta-da! Where'd it go, where'd it go, where'd it go? Should have looked at this before. But they usually have a price break on the thing because they have smaller things and therefore it's cheaper to do it that way. All right, so I'm not seeing it. Um, so I will possibly, if I can't find some of the, the brands that I see in here and other sources that are less expensive, I will probably order from Seeds and Such again because they do have good products, good seeds. Um, they also have, if you order uh, by February 28th, you get two packets of seeds this year. It's a type of... Uh, it's a chocolate pear tomato and a fire and ice ornamental pepper down here in the corner. So, uh, yeah. And that as an enticement really doesn't because neither one of those really appeal to me. Because I have plenty of tomatoes and plenty of peppers. I don't need ornamental of any kind. But uh, we'll see. And uh, so, Seeds and Such used to be one of my primary... Now it's kind of being a little shunted over in place of other things. This is totally tomatoes. If you need uh, tomato seeds and stuff that you can't find other place, this is the place to go. And you again, you also get two free seeds packets if you order, I think this is March 15th. They have pretty good prices, and they have so much information on, you know, whether they're intermediate, determinate, um, intermediate, inter, in, <laughs> indeterminate. Hmm, I had not, not have enough calcium or too much. But all these things, so yeah, you're going to find tomatoes that you probably never heard from and other things. They also have a good amount of pepper varieties, and then a smattering of other things, you know, kind of commonplace, which, you know, I usually don't, as a tendency, look at those kinds of things too, too strongly. Um, they are more expensive, generally, than seeds and such, but, again, if you're looking for unusual kinds of tomatoes and peppers, you know, this would be the place to go. My Baker Creek that I just started ordering from last year. I love this seed company um, for many different reasons. First of all, they're more heirloomy type seeds. And the fact that they, they're headquartered in Missouri and I'm in Tennessee, it's not exactly the same climate and zones and all that kind of stuff, but at least it's in the same general vicinity of, of where I am as opposed to somewhere up in Washington State or up in New England and, and that kind of stuff. So I really love this. Uh, the only thing that I'm, I, I'm not loving so much about Baker Creek's catalog this year. This is just the regular catalog that just has seeds in it. It's not as big as the one from last year and it doesn't have as many varieties. And now yeah, I know you can go and buy the big thing that's 500 odd pages, but you know, I have plenty of gardening books and things like that. And, you know, again, money's tight. I can't really afford $12 to, to buy a catalog, basically a catalog. So I get this, peruse it, and then I go to the website and, and get it. Their prices are also pretty good. Um, I bought several times from them last year. 
I really, really love Baker Creek because they have free shipping, even on their plants. I got two boysenberry plants last summer, summer, yeah, early summer, and they were shipped free. I mean, the stuff that's killing me on buying plants and, and bare root trees and stuff like that isn't exactly the price of, of the plants themselves, it's the shipping. And I know it's not any of these seed catalogs fault, it's the, the post office and stuff like that upping their rates, which that seems to be all over the place these days, as having a website myself, you know, every time I get a notice from the post office that rates are going up again, I'm like, okay, great, that's another one that people aren't going to want to shop online because of the, of the shipping, great, and I'm not in a, you know, on my, on my, uh, milk crate here, my, uh, you know, I can't really at this early stage of my business be able to afford free shipping. So yeah, so we'll, we'll figure something else. But they've got beautiful pictures in here, information, and then go to their website because every time I go through here, it's like I see something completely brand new and I must have it, even though I don't really have room to grow it. And then we have Jung Seeds and Plants. Um, Jung is out of Wisconsin. So again, it's one of those things that I generally tend to try and grow, you know, and buy stuff from areas, you know, from seed companies that do are a little bit more central to where I am in Tennessee, but you know, not always the case. So Jung, um, it has seeds, it has plants, it has fruit trees, it has tree trees, it has, you know, perennials. And I've, I bought a uh, Lenten rose from them one year and it's doing fine. Um, I need to find it a different spot. I don't think it's quite as happy where it is right now. So I need to think of another place that I can put it. But, uh, and then seeds and stuff like that. I wonder if they have, let me look. While I'm thinking of it. So once upon a time, I had bought No, do you not have it anymore? Oh, that was my favorite. It was a type of butternut, and I do still have the seed, some seeds from it, I think. Not that I really need butternut squash. I got this one variety. Be on the lookout if you were into butternut squash. It was called Narragansett. And I bought some seeds, and the first year that I planted it, I think I planted three hills. And I got so many butternut squashes. And then I roasted them and kind of scooped out all the flesh and, and mashed it down and froze it. I still have butternut squash, you know, pureed butternut squash in my freezer. And that was like three years ago. And it's still good. I made a pumpkin pie at, on Thanksgiving using the butternut squash. And it tasted better than pumpkin. So, bummer. They don't have it. At least not in this proof. But, yeah, I know, you know, so, uh, they do have it, they, they give you your zones, your frost zones, and things like that. They have plants, they have gadgets for out in the garden, they have gadgets for in the kitchen, so it's one that I, I don't buy a lot from, but so far the stuff that I've gotten has been pretty good. Um, the other thing I like about it, it's a family-owned uh, business, and they've been around for like 116 years. So I like that kind of stuff. All right, so that's the catalogs that I've used before that I've received. I'm really chomping at the bit the fact that, you know, I want my seed catalogs all now, especially with this winter storm that's supposed to be coming here in a couple of days. I want it. But... Got a few new ones that I kind of just kind of happened on, either recommendations from other YouTubers and things like that, that I went ahead and signed up for their, their, uh, their catalogs. So this is Seed Savers Exchange. This is an outfit that's more, yeah, this is out in Iowa, so it's more of a Midwest, but they've got people from all other. Um, I got the catalog. It's good. Um... It's got a lot of good information, but the one 
catalog that I really like that's similar to this is the Southern Exposure Seed Exchange that is centered in Virginia, which is definitely closer to me. And they, they pretty much are very specific to the Southeast and plants that are more acclimated toward that things. They've got, they have cotton seeds that you can grow cotton for, you know, unless you want to plant a lot of cotton, you know, basically just be a novelty thing. Check with your extension office before you do, because some states do have a um, restriction, need to have like special permission, that kind of stuff. Uh, they have several different kinds of peanuts instead of just the regular good old, you know, Virginia peanuts and stuff like that, that I've um, seen in other places before. So I like Seed Savers Exchange, but I'm not really seeing too much that kind of overwhelms what um, the Southern Exposure Seed Exchange gives for me. They do have information on saving seeds, harvesting seeds and things like that. So, and this is more of a uh, kind of a uh, cooperative kind of deal. So pe different gardeners and stuff like that, if they've got, you know, an heirloom seed that they've been growing in the family for, you know, decades, you know, they'll, they'll propagate some and send them to this place and then they'll, they'll grow them out for distribution to other pe people, which is nice. Uh, I got Twilly seeds. This is more of a, you know, if you have an actual plant nursery, um, and it's got mostly the stuff that you would see in a plant nursery. Um, I guess it's kind of on par with Johnny's. Um, this particular one, though, is from South Carolina. So I thought I'd give it a go and see if there was anything in there. It gives good information, too. Um, but again... not really seeing that there's anything that I can't live without at least this year. So I'll just keep them in mind. Then I was turned on to Thedco. Um, who was it? Was it Gary the Good? David the Good. Gary, he won't appreciate that if he hears this. David the Good, um, he mentioned something. I think he was, or maybe it was somebody else. Well, if it wasn't you, David, I'm sorry. But he said something about Fedco. And I had never heard of Fedco. They are out of Maine, which I know is totally out of my jurisdiction here in Tennessee. But what kind of piqued my interest is the fact that they have an entire catalog. Now, this is just a plain catalog. It's like the old tiny catalogs that just have the descriptions of information. And then like black and white drawings kind of deal, which are really actually very nice. But they have a lot of tables of apples and what the different varieties are good for they they pretty much stick with just like heirloom type apples which i'm okay with um the different rootstocks they sell the rootstocks they will sell you bare root trees but they will also sell you rootstock different kinds of rootstocks whether you want standard semi-dwarf dwarf they have for apples pears uh the stone fruits and cherries i believe and then they will also send you the scion wood so you can graft your own trees. And so, and they're, you know, they're not dirt cheap or anything like that. So if you are at all interested, you've never heard of Fedco like I've never heard of. Um, if you've never grafted fruit trees or anything like that, I would suggest that you contact your uh, farm extension office and see if they're going to be giving um, tree grafting classes late winter, early spring. Um, the one I have here, uh, I've taken a class twice and I'm getting better. Um, but you usually you pay a certain price and you get a certain kind of rootstocks and then people who are in like the master gardener group and, and other people in the area will donate scion wood and you go and you pick the kind that you want and then people show you how to do the grafting. So if you want to do your own kind of orchards and things like that, and they have these nice descriptions and they do have um, like Arkansas black and others that are actually originated here in the South. So it's not just a, a Northern thing. Uh, they've got 
you know, raspberries, fruit, uh, blueberries, blackberries, um, elderberries, so many different kinds of elderberries that I didn't even know existed. You know, here in Tennessee, I mean, elderberries grow wild along the side of the road. So, so I will definitely be perusing that this weekend. They sell mushroom starts, um, bulbs. And then they have the bigger catalog, which is basically seeds and all that kind of stuff. And it's... Again, nothing fancy, none of this glossy color photography or anything like that. They're just they're just descriptions and line drawings. But they're kind of cool. And I go through here, I look and see. So I'll be also looking at these guys to see. Um, but I definitely will probably be ordering fruit uh fruit fruit tree, rootstocks, and scion wood and stuff like that earlier, later on the year. Okay, I went and found some of the seed catalogs from last year that I have not gotten. So this is a pile of the ones that I've gotten this year. Those are the ones that I've gotten this year. It's probably about two inches high. This is the one from last year that I still haven't gotten. It's probably a good three inches high. <laughs> something fell, something fell, something fell. So I just wanted to prove from the previous segment things. So this is the seeds and such from last year. So this year, the... The high highest pack per pack price is three ninety nine. Last year it was two ninety nine, and then I think either the year before that or two thousand nineteen. You know, it was the cheapest it's ever been two thirty nine or something like that. So, you know, yay inflation. Me no like, and you know the whole thing of you know once prices go up they rarely go back down again so and i also wanted to prove so this is the baker creek catalog from this year it is like 80 odd pages and this is the catalog from last year you can not only is it a slightly smaller size just in size of the paper but it's also like over it's like 160 odd pages so you know completely understand Baker Creek you know you have to do what you gotta do but still kind of a letdown when you're expecting this and you get you know <laughs> like half <laughs> of what you'd gotten the year before so I'm gonna hold on to this just because it's pretty and because just in case there's stuff in there because I don't know about you all. Maybe it's because I'm old fashioned. I mean, I'm okay going on to websites and things like that. But there is just, I mean, there's nothing like sitting on your couch in the evening when there's not really a whole lot you can do. I mean, you got, yeah, I can knit or something like that. But to get in here and just start going through and looking and seeing what they have, what you know appeals to you and then you go on to the website or at least i do so all right so i'm off off the soapbox um about those two things prices and stuff in the catalogs so now i wanted to go back these are the stack of catalogs from last year that i hope that I hope I'm going to be getting at some point, hopefully in the next month, because that's the other thing. Yeah, I know, and again, I know I can go online onto the website and look for the seeds there and order early if I'm concerned about 
you know, certain seed types selling out quickly. But I want my seed catalogs. I want them before Christmas. And you've got five days. Well, four days with mailing thing. Well, I guess five. Well, yeah, four days. So this is the rest of my list that I still haven't gotten the catalogs for this year. Um, Territorial. I love Territorial. Um, it is a company out in Oregon, but they have a you know a, a lot of selection. Um, I have a tendency. I usually go to them to get my garlic. They usually have some. It's more pricey, more expensive than if you buy it at, at you know places that are are specifically garden producers. But if you're ever in a bind, you can't find garlic in fall, try territorial because they do have a lot of varieties. Um, shallots, onions, got a lot of veggies. So let's see, we got tomatoes, tomatillos. Okay, so we've got about 100 pages of veggies, seeds, cover crops, herbs. You've even got um, cereal crops, um, buckwheat, oats, that kind of thing, herbs, flowers, and then different kinds of fruit plants and things like that. They have wasabi. They have the, I guess it's the inoculant to make truffles. I don't think I'd want to go to that, that expense. I mean, it's like $65 for one plant. Yeah, oh, it's an English oak tree inoculated with truffle spores. All right. Yeah. Um, they have tea plants, the Camellia sinensis. They have coffee plants. Um, although when I spoke about my order from MI Gardeners, he has seeds for coffee plants and it was $2 for, I want to say it was five seeds. So I'm going to plant and just, I mean, I don't expect to make coffee or anything like that from those five little seeds, but it'd be kind of interesting. You're not going out, cat. Yes, you're just going to turn around and want to come back in because it's that kind of day. Yep, I know. Can I get back to this now? Thank you. Uh, they've got seed tapes with different veggies. They've got stuff, equipment, row covers, those kinds of things. So territorial and territorial is also good for, they not only have the spring catalog, but they have a fall winter catalog for the stuff that you can grow in the fall. And somehow or other, I keep forgetting about the fall catalog. I need to remember that. I hope they send me one. Does this go through? <laughs> so I may look through this again put that aside to peruse and just see, remind myself of what I should be thinking for for next fall and winter. So I'll put that over here. So that's territorial. This is my select seeds, the one that I got the end of the season sale for, you know, $2 each. So this is, it's basically, it's main just is to do like pollinators so a lot of flowers that kind of things um but they have different kinds of and the corn flower that i got last year was the select ultraviolet that goes flowers that are anywhere from purple to violet blue and they were they weren't quite as neon purple as that shows in the picture, but I also didn't have that many plants either. I just planted a few. And uh, there's the blue diadem in the center.
I had gotten the, did I get this from here? Bronze Queen. So I had gotten the Flower and Tobacco, the Nicotiana, the Bronze Queen. And it had this picture, which looks way more interesting than it does in real life. So if anyone wants some Bronze Queen <laughs> tobacco, Flower and Tobacco, let me know. Yeah, I didn't, you'd think in East Tennessee, I mean, the county I live in at one time was the burly tobacco capital of pretty much the world, I think. And since, you know, the tobacco industry has kind of gone downhill for obvious reasons, um, really not as much. But you would think that I'd be able to grow flower and tobacco here. Maybe I just did it. You know, planted it in the wrong spot. I may try it again with a different kind. It just, the color in real life just did not appeal to me as much as the picture did. So that's the other reason why I don't want to buy humongous packets of stuff that I've never tried before. Because, you know, you get to it and you've got 500 seeds and you plant a few and you discover, hey, you don't really like this. Or, hey, it doesn't do well here. And then you've got all the seeds. So... That's why I like some of these these uh, companies that have sell the smaller amounts just so I can try it out. And then when I find out that it actually does well and I like it, next year I can go for a larger amount with a different seed company or something like that. Good old Johnny's. Again, this is more of a um, producer. Um, Johnny's is similar to the previous one. Oh, what was it? Well, it doesn't matter. Wait, wait, wait. It's right here. It's right here. Pine tree, not Fedco. Twillies. So the Twillies that I had mentioned in the, in the last little segment before we segued over to the do not have yet for this year. So Johnny's and Twillies are similar. Johnny's is out of Maine, where Twillies is from South Carolina, so... You know, that's why I got Twillies, just to see if they had anything. But Twillies is not as extensive as Johnny's. Johnny's is pretty 240-odd pages here. So if you are looking for more bulk seeds, you know, Johnny's, I would probably recommend you go there. Then we have Gurney's. So the one thing I like, kind of like about Gurney's, ooh, look, a post-it note that I forgot about. I wonder what that was. So Gurney's has two different versions, and I don't know if they have different versions for different parts of the country, but they have the regular Gurney's catalog, which Gurney's tends to be more, I mean, they've got some seeds, but they also do a lot of, like, fruit plant, you know, fruit, fruit trees and bushes, apple trees, strawberries, that kind of thing, grapes. So they have this thing, and the one thing that I really... I've never been able to kind of cash in on. They have this cool little coupon that if you order before the end of February, if you buy, you know, over $50 worth of stuff, you get 25 off. If you pay 100 or more, you get $50 off. And if you pay 200 or more, you get $100 off. So if you buy $50, you know, $51 worth of plants and seeds and stuff like that, and you do it before the end of their little, their little time thingy here, you basically get your stuff for half price. Well, last year I tried this. Unfortunately, I waited till the very end. And even though I got it ordered online, it turned out that I think out of four, because I got, I got a crab apple and I was going to get a, a blueberry, a lot of fruit stuff, you know, actual perennial plants, trees, that kind of stuff. Um, so only one of my items actually was in stock and they, you know, they kind of, they kind of irritate me a little bit because they didn't just come out forthright, email me and say, hey, you know, it's taking a long time for this stuff to get here. Are there any other varieties that we can send to you instead? 
um, that we do have. And here's a list of, you got this, and you know, this is a list of similar stuff that do any of these appeal to. So if they had done something like that, um, so basically what I, I did since they were, cause I ordered, it was, I can't remember if it was the end of, of February, if it was the end of March. Well, it had to have been cause this is last year's, this past year's thing. So I think I ordered everything like the 27th or something like that. And by April, I still had, you know, I, I had gotten the crab apple pretty quickly, like within a week, but everything else, you know, it was like six, seven weeks later, still wasn't getting anything, wasn't getting anything. And finally, I emailed them to find out what was going on. And they basically said, you know, everything you, you bought was, is out of stock. And I'm like, well, <laughs> what are we going to do about this? So ended up getting, you know, money back except for what the, the tree was. So at least they did that. And they also have this thing for Southern Gardens that is more stuff that's more you know, appropriate for Southern Garden. Sure. Cause like lilacs, um, I love lilacs, but they don't do very well down here in, in the, in the South. Uh, so they have a lilac that's good for Southern gardeners. Now, whether that's guarantees that you're going to have good gar, you know, good lilac success. Let's see, page 46. Um, what was it called? Rosie Beach Party. Where are you? Ah. So the Beach Party Lilacs, good for zones four through 10. You know, everything else, you know, a lot of them, zone seven is about as far south as you can go with lilacs a lot of times. So at least they have those though. So hoping to get one of these again, hopefully. But you'll notice, oh, maybe it wasn't because the expiration date was the 30th on down here. So whichever it was, still took a long time. So I hope, you know, to get another one of these catalogs pretty quickly so I can take advantage of that sale. Because you can get quite a few things for way cheaper. And, you know, watch my luck is they won't have that anymore because of the whole inflation and price increases and stuff like that. All right, so this is the Southern Exposure Seed Exchange that I was talking about when we talked about the the seed exchange uh, from I, in Iowa, from Iowa that I did. So this is another one of those ones. This is more on, this is one thing I really like about places like this. The seed exchange in Iowa, their catalog was on that glossy, shiny paper. This is on just regular, you know, dull paper. I love the little drawings on the front. They do have color pictures, but it's not like, you know, publishing, you know, making, you know, creating a book kind of quality and kind of stuff like that. But it gets the, the effect and thing. So all this stuff is um, basically concentrated mostly on growing stuff in the southeast that can handle the the higher temperatures and the higher humidities we have down here in the south and it tells you exactly i mean it'll tell you um i mean some of them are just heirloom stuff that do well and others are varieties that were like in certain families um there's a lot of stuff a lot of historical things of uh plants that were used by um back in the days of you know the slave issues and things like that that the the slaves from Africa they had some of their own plants that they were able to grow down here that would carry over that kind of kind of did a continuity kind of thing so there's a lot of that and there's a lot of great little stories in here of, the, of certain people um they actually have another it's one of these cooperatives um and they share stories and who is it? What is her name? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Oh, Ira Wallace. If you ever heard of Ira Wallace, she writes a lot of publications on, you know, gardening and all that kind of stuff. She is one of the, the founders of this. 
They have the Heritage Harvest Festival in Monticello every year. Um, so if you are anywhere near the Southeast, look for this Southern Exposure Sea Exchange. Ask for a catalog and you'll, you'll enjoy it. Um, Vermont Bean Seed Company. So obviously Vermont Bean Seed means they're fried of Vermont. Another Northeastern outfit, except this says Wisconsin. Weird. I think they used to be in Vermont. <laughs> Psych. But as you can imagine, some one of their mainstays is all of their bean seeds. I mean, they've got regular like pole beans and bush beans, like green beans kind of deal, lima beans, but they've got like dry beans for making soups and things like that. And then they go off onto other things, um, regular veggies and stuff like that. But if you are looking for bean seeds, especially dry beans, which a lot of people are kind of looking into for stocking their pantries, you know, you can put a lot, a heck of a lot of, of dry beans into like a half gallon um, glass jar, can jar and stuff like that. And as long as you keep you know, you've dried everything out and keep everything nice and dry. You know, they'll they'll stay for a really long time. You can freeze them if you have to to keep them long. You know, going longer. Um, but yeah, so Vermont bead seed. That's a good little thing. Haven't bought from them in a while because I've been kind of off of beans for a while. Not because I don't like them. I just have other things. And there's good old park seeds. Um, park seeds, I think, would probably save money if they just issued one version of their catalog per year, <laughs> unless they did, like, um, territorial and did a, a spring, summer, and then a fall, winter version. Um, but yeah, so we got the usual slick, nice, full color pictures, not as much description and stuff like that, but every once in a while... You go in and you'll see stuff that you can't find anywhere else. And, um, you know, I have, I have quite a few seeds. The, the seed supply that I do have from Parks is starting to dwindle. Um, let's see if I can find the info on... Uh, no. So the thing about park seeds is that they do have tend to be their prices seem to be sometimes pricier than in other catalogs and things like that. Um, but I'm guessing they're going for a different, you know, rather than the cheap people like me, they're going for the the people who, you know, want pretty stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I want pretty and cheap. So I will still continue to at least peruse the catalog. Um, you'll see sometimes if you subscribe to their newsletter, they will have um, times when shipping is free. So if you kind of wait on those, I think one of the reasons why I don't do a lot of Shopping with Parks is that their, their shipping and handling charge is a little higher than others that I use. And, yeah, I mean, I'll probably do like a post-it note on the cover. And when I see that they're having a free seed, a free shipping week or something like that, then, you know, if I, if there's something on there that I absolutely do want or need, I can do on the free shipping thing. And then this is Shumways. Shumways is just, it's been around forever. Um, they're another one of these that, you know, it's no frills, you know, black and white drawings, descriptions, not as expensive as Fedco's, but it's still kind of cool to look at and do brews. And these are more of the older fashioned heirloom types. Um, You know you're gross, right? 
Especially when you climb up on top of me at night and do that in my face. That's really rude. But anyway, yeah, so this is just, it's a nice little thing. I'm noticing when I looked through this last year that the prices also seem to be going up. But again, who's, who's aren't? Um, they do have some, like, fruit plants. Um, they've got things like gooseberries. They've got cranberry, or they did last year. They've got some blueberries. Um, the honeyberries. I started growing honeyberries here a few years ago. I got two, and they're not doing well. They're just kind of, they, they're growing, but they're not getting the size they're supposed to. So these, those are a couple others that I need to, they, I need to think about changing their location and see if they do better. I think they, I don't, they think they do well in cold weather. I don't think they like hot weather, I think is what it is. And then there's other uh, things. What am I missing? Burpees. Um, about the only thing with burpees that I wish... You know, they're another one that's kind of gotten expensive. Um, but they had a variety of sweet corn. And I can't think of what it's called. But basically, it's sweet corn that you can grow in containers. And it works. You get a shorter stock, but you get full size ears of corn. What is it called? was in my mind until I went to talk about it but I haven't had the best well of course I haven't purchased from them for a while so I should probably give them a benefit of a doubt but the last few times that I purchased burpee seeds whether it was on the catalog um or when I go to like Lowe's and things like that and they've got it on their little their little seed displays um they just you know maybe it was happenstance do not know but the quality the germination rate wasn't great the plants that did grow just did not seem to thrive as much and they weren't you know i got better results out of cheaper seeds from from other sources and stuff like that so burpees is on my do not fly list um others you know park seeds um shumways since I've found, purchased, uh, you know, found other sources for those kinds of seeds. Vermont bead seed, if I, you know, get back into doing um, beans and things like that, especially like dried beans, you know, I may go back to that again. Gurneys, if they have their half price sale this spring. Southern Exposure, there's a few things on my list when I get the new catalog, hopefully soon. Johnny's, I've never purchased anything from, but only because, you know, that's more commercial than, than home gardener kind of stuff. But one of these days, I mean, I've heard a lot of good things about them. So select seeds, I've obviously already made this, made my selection this year, at least from those things. I'll see what's new in the catalog this year. And territorial, when I get this year's catalog, um... I'll see if there's anything that I just absolutely cannot live without. Um, go through that fall winter guard, you know, thing to make to see what's on there that I can think about for next fall. But that's a lot. I mean, this video is probably an hour long by now. It's a good thing I'm cute. I forgot my precious pine tree. So pine tree is another Yankee. This is out of Maine. And I love pine tree because they're more family oriented. They've been around, it says here, about over 40 years. And they have, it's one of those things where they have seeds and they have like potato, uh, you know, starts and sweet potatoes and trees and, you know, bulbs and things like that they don't have everything and they usually tend to be more um heirloomy and open pollinated kind of stuff they do have hybrids too but 
it's mostly stuff that can be used in a home garden as opposed to, you know, commercial. Um, there are another one kind of like uh, seeds and such that ha that kind of sells, uh, you know, small amounts. They don't pay as much for. They have books. They have gadgets. They are also into things like soap making, and they have a little gift kits and things like that. So, pine tree is another one that I use a lot of. I had that sitting off to the side for some reason. I have no idea why, but yeah, pine tree. All right. So this is my first package of seeds and I purchased this this is an outfit called select seeds I haven't even received the catalog for it yet I what was I don't even know where I was what I was looking at maybe I was on Facebook and this came across one of the the news feeds that miraculously you know reads my mind but uh they were announcing that they were having a big sale um, the end of the year sale, getting rid of, you know, stock from 2022. And every pack that was on sale was $2 a pack. And I'm just like, okay, I can do that. So I ended up with 10 different packets of seeds. And just want to kind of show off. So I got two different kinds of basil that I've never tried before. Um, this is that evergreen emerald towers that supposedly grows kind of more in a column. And it doesn't spread out as far as the other kinds of like Italian basils and things like that. The other thing that interested me, even though I love growing basil and letting it go to flower for my bees, sometimes it happens a little too fast and I don't get as good of a har harvest for myself because after basil goes to flower, um, it has a tendency to kind of taste, the leaves kind of taste kind of bitter almost. They don't, they don't taste quite as, as yummy to me as Really? You're going to play with your ball now? Thanks. So, yeah. So, the the other benefit of these is opposed to growing straight up. Um, they get two to three feet high, it says here. Um, it also delays flowering, which we'll see if it works. The other one I have never tried before, and I actually um, want to try uh, Jessica Sowers on Roots and Refuge uh, channel. Uh, she was, thank you girl, she had, uh, has a blog and she also had a video about making tea with holy basil, this is Tulsi, that she recommended, and so I've never actually grown holy basil before, but I'm going to try it and just see, I'm not usually a tea drinker, but we'll see if, if I change my mind. So those, basically two, two things of basil. And then I got a bunch of flowers. So these are China pinks. They just have these really neat, like little edged, really dark red and then kind of white edge to them. I just thought they were so pretty. And I like pinks. And let's see, they are a, I can't read. Dun, 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 dun. Where is it? Where is it? Ah, biennial to short-lived perennial on zones 7 through 10. Well, I'm a 7A, so we'll see what happens. So I'm going to try that. I've got some uh, some pinks that are just kind of a red color, cherry pink color. So I'm going to grow these and see because they're starting to... I've had them for several years. They're, every time I think, they're yeah, they're gone, they're gone this year. I'm going to have to replace them. They keep coming back. This is a cornflower called Blue Diadem that I just like cornflowers. I have the uh, ultraviolet that I had gotten, I believe from here is from Select Seeds as well, that I want to try because I just like blue flowers. That's, they're my favorite. These are hardy annuals, but they also are supposed to self-seed, so we'll see. And they're good for like a wildflower garden and that kind of stuff. Nasturtiums, baby rose. I just like that kind of color. 
and they're supposed to be a smaller type nasturtium, not get as big or as wide as most others. And also, if this is the one that I saw, they tend to put their flowers up above the foliage. Sometimes some of the varieties that I grow, the flowers hide underneath the leaves. And some of that could be because they just got too much nutrition. Um, I usually I usually have a tendency to grow these with amongst other like veggies and stuff like that. So the veggies get get fertilized, and then the nasturtiums do. So I don't know if that's that's part of it or what. Uh, the facelia, I wish it had a picture. Here you go. Uh, this is summertime blues. This is supposed to be a good bee plant, and it's blue. And it just supposedly has lacy foliage and flowers and stuff like that. But we'll give it a try. Also for my wildflower garden. All right, I have discovered that I really like dahlias. I had bought, and I have a, I have a, a video on this channel already. I'll see if I can link it, probably won't be able to, but I don't have that many videos right now, so you can probably find it pretty easily. But I had bought, I had always resisted buying dahlias, getting dahlias, because they always just seem so high maintenance, I guess. And they really are not. Um, I bought a, I think it was like a half gallon pot from my local uh, produce stand slash plant nursery a couple years ago. It was a gorgeous red color, no name. Uh, it had a, a, you know, plant, you know, the plant ID thing in there. Don't know if it actually was, but it was definitely, probably was kind of from seed as well. Um, I take it, took it home. I found a nice spot for it out in my garden, planted it, and it did great. And I dutifully, you know, I went on and did checking and how you're supposed to handle dahlias and all that kind of stuff. I, when it started getting colder last fall, 2021, I dug it up, I chopped off the, the foliage and the stem up to about maybe two inches or so, and then I stored it in my garage um, to and kind of covered it in sawdust, you know, brushed off most of the dirt, let it dry out a little bit, put it in a box with some sawdust to keep it kind of, you know, insulated and also not so it wouldn't get too, if it got humid or something like that, it wouldn't, you know, rot it or anything like that. And then last year I decided I saw all these seeds for, because I've gone on and I've priced dahlia bulbs. They seem a little pricey to me. And I'm like, you know, I've really, you know, I'm not really doing this to sell, you know, flowers, you know, flower arrangements and things like that. You know, most of the time, you know, I go out and I deadhead the dead dahlias. I just leave all the flowers on the plant until they die and then I take them off. But I bought a couple of different f packs of seeds. I don't know if it was from Select Seeds or if it was from a different place. I can't remember. But it was Unwins and mm, Mignon. Something like that. So they were both kind of more dwarf, maybe foot, foot and a half tall. And they had some gorgeous flowers. If you go and look at that video, I had white, I had red, I had cheery yellows. Really, really liked them. Some of them were more double, some of them were single. So I saw this and decided I kind of liked it. This is another mix. It's called Bishop's Children. And uh, so I'm going to give that a try and do three different. And by the way, the, the dahlia that I bought at the produce stand two years ago... I dug it up. I had actually separated it last spring and, and planted it in two different spots. I remembered to dig them. I dug them all up. All the things, all the ones that I did from seed had the same, you know, tubers. And so they are all, I did not label any of them because it doesn't really matter. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so I'm going to add this to my repertoire. Um, don't know if I'm going to plant any more from seed this year. If the ones that are have the tubers that I have in storage don't 
amount to anything or don't survive for whatever reason. I've heard some people say that sometimes they, for whatever reason, if you have really, really cold weather, even though it's in an area that doesn't freeze, you know, you just never know. Um, so I'll probably go ahead and plant these from seeds, at least a few of them, just to see what, what how they do, how they look. And then if I need to, I can plant more of the others next year. Cardinal Climber. I also have, there's another video that I went through, did kind of a little dart uh, garden tour that um, I had Cardinal Climber climbing up my outside um, stairs. I really like Cardinal Climbers because the hummingbirds like it. It's very nice and bright and cheery and it grows. Unfortunately, I had, I think the seed I had was kind of old, so I didn't get as many plants and I didn't get as much coverage. And uh, so I went ahead and got fresh seed just to see if maybe that was the problem. So this is actually in the same family as Morning Glories. And speaking of which, so when I lived in Florida as a kid, we moved up here after I graduated from high school, we being my parents, my brother and I, um, we didn't have morning glories down in Florida, at least not in my area. When we moved up here to Tennessee and in the garden spots, we have volunteer morning glories pretty much come in and overtake the entire garden toward the end of the summer. Uh, if we're a little bit more vigilant, you know, it we might be able to keep some of them to the minimum, but I don't live at my parents' house so I can't go over there as much. And my dad is kind of, yeah, he's not as thrilled about gardening as I am. So I either need to go over there. Pearl, really? Pearl, hey, thank you. But I have, and if you look at other videos I've done about the garden, stuff like that, you may notice cats. Why do I have to have cats? But uh, my house is, it's a one-story house, but it's built up on top of the garage. But it's not an in-ground garage. It's a above ground. So I'm basically living in a two-story house that's just one story. So outside, bless their hearts, whoever built this house, I have no idea what their goal was. They have a front door that looks out on the west side of the house and they built a teeny tiny little, maybe, you know, four by eight size, maybe maybe 10 feet little, I call it the Julia balcony. You just go out on the balcony, there's no stairs, you can't get down from there. I don't know if they are planning to build a regular deck with stairs down to the bottom, but they never did. And with today's building prices and lumber costs and things like that, unless I win the lottery, it's not going to happen until soon. So I have this Juliet balcony. And it, it looks ridiculous. If you go and look at some of those videos that I show you, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's kind of off-center. And instead of taking equal amounts on both sides of the front door to make it look more balanced, I think the guy was on something when he built it. I don't know. I'm not even going to ask. But it's got the big, like, six by six posts that go up. It's got to be 16 feet high. And so what my plan is, um, so there's the Julia balcony with the posts coming down. And then there's the two, you know, garage doors that you can drive in. One, I, just one of them is in use. The other one has uh, one of my beehives in front of. Um, but what I plan on doing, I had some uh, half plastic half barrels, planters, that I had perennial hibiscuses in. And um, I moved those away because I thought they're only getting hot afternoon sun. They weren't doing great, even though they've been there for several years. Um, so I thought I'll go ahead, move them out get them out into the garden where they'll get more sun during the entire day. And of course I refresh the soil like I do every year, put down more mulch, that kind of stuff. And we'll see if that makes any difference for them next year. Otherwise I may, really? 
Can you not go take a nap? <laughs> but what my plan is, is to get um, trellis. And I don't know if I want to go to the immediate expense of getting the actual wood or plastic trellises at Lowe's and getting some like wooden slats and placing them because the 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 width of it is wider. No, it's not wider than eight feet, is it? But it, it I think they're like six feet apart. I think it's like six feet apart the two posts. And so if I turned it over on the side on its side, I'd have to cut off like two feet of the trellis, which considering the price of you know trellis, whether it's wood or plastic, pretty pricey and I'd probably need two of them. So I thought what I could do was instead of doing that, I would put, you know, a one by two or something like that, do it in equal spaces so it would kind of support it a little better and then kind of drill it in and fasten it each one. And I could probably just do one and have it like two or three feet off the ground. And then what I thought I could do is I can get more of those half barrels fill them up with soil, and plant other things too, because I know that the, the morning glories, you know, won't take up. They'll go up rather than down. But I thought about doing, um, getting two, three different kinds of things. So I haven't gotten, I'm going to do red, white, and blue. So I got, uh, no picture on this, Scarlet O'Hara, which is a red, obviously scarlet. And then Grandpa Otts, which is kind of a purpley blue. And then I'm going to do a moonflower. And the moonflower is supposed to flower in the evening and be very nice and smelly. I like smelly. And uh, just have the three and just kind of be patriotic. Yeah. And just do red, white, and blue kind of across the thing. And so that's it so far. I have another order of seeds that I just ordered on Sunday. I don't anticipate getting it until well after Christmas, maybe not even until the new year. Don't know, I've not dealt with them. So the, the, the seeds that I've ordered, the other seeds that I've ordered, I don't have a catalog for, but it's the MI Gardener with Luke. Um, he's also on YouTube, so check him out. It's just capital M, capital I, capital G, Gardener. Um, and he's very good and he, and his family have started a seed uh, store. Basically, they have a storefront now. They also do mail order. They just don't have a, a catalog. They, they're they totally online. So um, I had ordered there in Ohio, Michigan, 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 because I'm MI, duh. Um, but they do more of the open pollinated and stuff for, you know, home gardeners and things like that. I feel very 3D here. Um, but I had actually was watching Roots and Refuge latest video. Well, not latest, but one of the latest. And she had a thing where if you put in, she has a code for it. So go to her website and look for it. <coughs> and... In addition, oh yeah, the seed packets, each seed packet's only $2. And of course, you're not going to get like, you know, you're not going to get like, you know, a thousand seeds or anything like that for $2. But you're going to get enough so at least you know if you like that variety or not. So every seed packet is $2. He has a lot of heirlooms, open pollinated, that kind of stuff. Um, the I ended up getting... 10 packets like I did with select seed. So $20 plus I got 10% off because I used Jess's code and there was free shipping. So any seed catalog that I use and they have free shipping, you betcha I'm going to advertise for them because, I mean, again, I understand, you know, that um, you know, it's not really 
any of the seed companies' fault that they have to up their rates or anything like that. But I find it very, I mean, I would rather pay a little extra per packet of seeds and get free shipping than to pay enough for, you know, sometimes two packets of seeds just in shipping. So that's just me on my high horse, you know, don't want to offend anyone. If anyone listens to this, watches this, doesn't agree with my things, well, make your own channel and make your own views. But, uh, so that is it. I'm going to do a separate video on, uh, well, probably maybe several videos because I'm going to do all the seeds that I still already have. Veggies, herbs, flowers, and cover crops. So I may be able to combine the herbs and the cover crops because I don't think I have as many herb stuff. But I will give you my opinion of why I bought it. Did I, you know, what if I bought something that, you know, was brand new to me, did I like it? Will I buy it again? That kind of stuff. Just keep in mind that, and I will reiterate this in the video. Really? I need Ritalin for my cat. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So everything that I'm doing is in East Tennessee. Where I am in East Tennessee, I'm, in, I'm basically in between two mountain ranges. I'm fairly flatlander here, but I'm kind of in a valley in between Smoky Mountains to the south and the Clinch Mountain Range to the north. So I'm kind of sandwiched in between the two mountain ranges. And where I am... I don't have a lot of trees, so I don't have a lot of shade during the hot times of the of the day and things like that, especially in July, August. Um, so there's things that I'm having to do, implement, like obviously using mulches all over the place. Um, I'm going to try to implement and use more shade cloths next year because I really think a lot of what's going on with my plants is that just they get you know, sun from morning until night. And during the the big, you know, the, the long day periods in the summertime, I mean, that's 16 hours of sunshine all the time. And then you've got 90 degree weather plus, 90 degree plus Fahrenheit, um, which is not comfortable for me. So I don't think some of these plants really enjoy it either. Um, and how I felt about pest pressure when I when I use these and just anything that, you know, did I have trials and tribulations while growing them? Did I finally figure out what I was doing wrong? That kind of stuff. Because even though I've had 50 years planting experience, you know, I was a master gardener. Um, I've since left that organization just because I didn't have time to do the volunteer work. If you are interested in sharing and educating and stuff like that, and you have extra time, uh, check out your local extension office. Um, about this time of year is when you start signing up for it because um, they usually run it like January, February until like May. Um, and it's got, you know, it's got its good points and its bad points. Um, again, it's a lot of volunteer work. Um, but it's, you know, at least my branch, and I'm sure all the others are pretty similar. It's like 40 hours a month. So, you know, 10 hours a week. Not 40 hours a month. 40 hours total. Right? Lord, I've forgotten already. All right, so yeah, let's go ahead and wind this one up. I think my battery's probably on its way out with all this video taking and get this all taken up. Hope to get it up on YouTube before Christmas. And then once I give my camera a rest and maybe figure out a better angle, because we'll see. And so I hope to get this video up pretty soon before Christmas. Um, Merry Christmas, Merry Yule, Happy Hanukkah, Merry everything. 
Um, and for those of you who are about to be hit by this winter storm, I know we're supposed to get like really cold temperatures. I mean, usually here in Tennessee, we don't get cold, cold weather until January, February. We've already had a pretty good cold spell beginning of October. We had another one in November, and now we're having this thing right before Christmas. Uh, two years ago, so was it Christmas of 2020, I think? Yeah. It snowed like six inches here, Christmas Day. And I was basically stuck here in my house. I couldn't get over to visit my parents or anything like that or friends or anything like that. So <laughs> I hope it's not going to be a repeat of that. Uh, because there's supposedly there's moisture coming up from the Gulf of Mexico and then this Arctic front coming down from the northwest. And depending on where the two meet, we're definitely going to get rain. We're definitely going to get cold weather. But whether or not the two hit at the right time to give us snow as opposed to rain and then solid freeze, it's anyone's guess. So I'm hoping that both miss us because I really don't want cold weather. I've been kind of happy with my electric bills lately. I was hoping for one more until we got into true winter next month. But Mother Nature doesn't want to cooperate with me. Um, so I'm just very thankful that I was able to get my heating and my heating and air unit replaced back in November. Otherwise, it was going to be a cold week this week. I have four cats. Yeah, crazy cat lady. Um, but I don't think even four cats would be enough to keep my entire house warm. So, so hope everybody has a great holiday. Happy New Year, unless I get another video out before New Year's, which may happen. I may be inspired. I may be stuck here for a few days and have no choice but to pester you guys. Um, but, yeah, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Yada, yada, yada. Happy New Year. And only, well, I start growing some seeds in January. So I've got about a month before I have to prep and get ready for that fun stuff. So everyone take care and I will talk to you later. Bye. Oh, good one. Yeah, so this is Pearl. And I uh, just wanted to show you. <laughs> nice booger. Go get my little. Yeah, thank you. Yes, go and get you one of your little wipes. So we can wipe your little nose. Yes, I know. Yes. So just for those of you who are a little concerned, she's fine. She's been doing this for at least a year and a half. It won't go away. She keeps on keeping on. I'm just resigned to having a snotty cat. Yay me.